show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to a very quick discussion video regarding Asuka turning up at Fastlane. Now I will cut straight to the point, I think that is a very very bad idea and this is why. Firstly, from a kayfabe storytelling perspective, Asuka has come onto the scene in Raw and beaten everybody that she's come up against. Granted, not always very convincingly, um, especially the last few weeks against people like Nia Jax. The fact that she was only able to get sort of almost nearly fluke victories against her the other week on Raw and also at Elimination Chamber doesn't paint her in the strongest of lights. So it looks like she's come in, sort of beaten everybody and... Because the last few weeks she's sort of nearly been losing, it looks like she's now switched over to SmackDown because presumably she sees that as an easier opportunity to win the belt. So that makes Charlotte look weak in comparison to Alexa Bliss because obviously they're both the champions of their brand. So that immediately would shine a light on Raw as a superior brand um, and basically make SmackDown the inferior brand. However, if we were to take the story aspect out of it and just look at the booking side of things, I still think it is a very, very bad idea. Now, everyone has been dumping on the idea of an Alexa Bliss Asuka match at WrestleMania, and I'm not really sure why. Granted, Alexa Bliss is not as good in the ring as Charlotte, but is a very, very credible champion. And after winning the Elimination Chamber match and retaining her title, they have booked her in the strongest possible way they can in recent months. So she looks like a very strong, credible, viable champion. And then were Asuka to dethrone her, that then elevates her up to that top level Yes, she's got this undefeated streak, which mainly comes from NXT, but she's carried that through onto the main roster, onto the flagship show, and within a few months, she's won the inaugural Women's Royal Rumble and used that opportunity at WrestleMania and beaten the champion who has won the inaugural Elimination Chamber. So surely that is a very, very good thing. But where she's jumped over to SmackDown Live... Presumably because she sees that potentially as more of a challenge, say they, they tell it that way, then all that does is dump all over the Raw women's division and the champion. Now the problem they've already got is at Survivor Series, Charlotte beat Alexa Bliss. So in the eyes of the fans, she is the better champion than Alexa Bliss is. So you could say that Asuka is gone over to SmackDown Live because she wants more of a challenge. Fine, okay, that makes sense. But what that then creates is the inferior brand on Raw. Because by completely bypassing Raw's champion, she's basically bypassing the entire roster. Because if she sees it that she's far too superior to beat Raw's champion, then anybody challenging for her title after WrestleMania is going to be equally inferior because she's just beaten the superstar that's at the top of the brand. So everybody under her, under Alexa, because obviously they would have been, because otherwise they would have been the champion that Asuka would have defeated. If they're not even on Alexa Bliss's level, then they must be garbage in comparison. So... Whatever way you play it, one brand comes off as the inferior brand to the other. Whereas if she'd have stayed on Raw, the brand that she was on anyway, they could have created an organic storyline with Alexa Bliss going forward. Or hell, obviously it's predetermined. Obviously they knew they wanted Asuka to win. They could have sowed the seeds long before the Royal Rumble even happened, but they've thrown her over to SmackDown. We've got four weeks of build now between her and Charlotte, and they've not even been in a ring together. 
I don't even think they were in NXT at the same time. Correct me if I'm wrong there, comment section. But don't think they were actually in NXT together. So these two, although they will put on a very, very good match, I'm sure, have no history at all. And we've now got to artificially create some kind of storyline within four weeks. And I just don't see that as being a particularly good option. Also, it then paints SmackDown as an inferior brand to Raw because they're having to draft Asuka over to SmackDown to give Charlotte a credible challenger for WrestleMania. Obviously, she's just defeated Ruby Riot at Fastlane. Before then, at the Royal Rumble, she wasn't putting her title on the line. Her last challenger, I believe, before that was Natalia. She hasn't faced Becky Lynch for the title. She hasn't faced Naomi. And I know they're both faces, and we get the whole face-face issue, but we've got that with Asuka. She's portrayed as a face character, and so is Charlotte. So you can't use that argument to not book Charlotte versus Naomi or Charlotte versus Becky, especially if they'd have won the tag team match against Carmella and Natalia. And I suppose you could have used one of those because they've just won the tag match, but Natalia lost the title to Charlotte and then got beaten in the rematch, and Carmella doesn't really need a title shot because she's got the briefcase, and they don't tend to book the briefcase holders in other kinds of title matches because they've already got that briefcase in hand. So because she's seen off essentially all of the Riot Squad because she's just beaten their leader, Carmella's out of the picture anyway, Lana doesn't wrestle anymore, Tamina's injured and quite frankly awful, all we're left with is Naomi and Becky and I think it's about time Becky had a title shot again, because it's been far, far too long since she did. And I think, actually, the last time she did come anywhere close to it was um, either at last year's WrestleMania or in the SmackDowns just after it, when there was the shake-up. Again, comment section, please correct me if I'm wrong there, but as memory serves, I think her last title shot was at... WrestleMania last year in that multi-woman match which to be honest was a bit of a mess and I just think that would have been a more interesting story to tell and then you could have turned one or other of them heel off the back of that by getting a little bit too desperate for the belt and a little bit too needy for it either Becky doesn't quite beat Charlotte at Wrestlemania so she needs to get a bit more aggressive and a bit more frantic to get the title off of her or Charlotte loses the title and completely loses it and basically goes heel on Becky in order to get the title back um, which I think would have been a better story because a heel Charlotte is so much better than a face Charlotte but there we go so yeah ultimately it's bad news all round as far as I'm concerned. Yes, it will be a very, very good match. And I think the only way you can get a glimmer of shining light from this is to have Carmella come down at the end of the match and beat Asuka for the title immediately. Thus ending the streak, which is starting to book her into a corner. And you get legitimate heat back on Carmella. I think it would make her character a lot more interesting as well, having the belt. Asuka, I think, would be more interesting chasing for that belt, at least in the short term, because she's not come across any of the women on SmackDown yet. And then, obviously, you've still got Charlotte's rematch in amongst that as well, so Carmella can play those two off against each other to hopefully retain her title, at least until sort of SummerSlam, to give herself a credible title run. But there we go, they are just my thoughts. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I shall be back soon, but until then, I have been that British guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.